All right, buckle up, because we're about to take a trip back in time to 1985. No flex capacitor needed, though, don't worry. I do love a good time travel adventure. Where are we headed? Straight into the pages of the December 85 issue of Chicago Performance and Instruction. We're on a mission to unearth the advice they were giving out to aspiring consultants, freelancers, you know, the independent types back then. Fascinating. I bet there were some real gems hidden in those pages. Oh, absolutely. This magazine was the publication for professional trainers back in the day. So we're talking pre-internet, free mobile phones, even pre-fax machines for some folks. It was a whole different world. Totally. And yet, you know what's amazing? So much of the advice still holds up today. It's like the fundamentals of going independent, they haven't really changed all that much. But we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, you've piqued my interest. What's the first stop on our journey through this vintage consulting gold mine? This issue features an article by Guy W. Wallace. He kind of dives headfirst into this idea of realistic self-assessment, which I got to say is maybe even more relevant in our world of like hustle culture and LinkedIn influencers. OK, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. What's this Guy W. Wallace all about? Well, he doesn't sugarcoat anything. This guy is big on cutting through the noise and really forcing you to examine if you've got what it takes to make it on your own. I like him already. Sounds like my kind of straight shooter. So what's his secret sauce for this whole self-assessment thing? He asks some seriously tough questions. And I mean, these aren't just rhetorical questions either. He wants you to really sit down and wrestle with them. Hit us with one of these tough questions. Okay, get ready for this. Are your specific strengths in the areas of analysis, content, performance tasks, information systems, design, development, or are you a master of all trades? What makes you think so? Wow, he's not messing around. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in what we want to be good at rather than honestly assessing where our true strengths lie. Exactly. He's calling us out, even from 1985. And here's the other thing I love. He it doesn't just focus on skills. He also digs into mindset. Like he asks, how committed are you in your current position? If you're expecting yourself to radically change because you will finally be working for yourself, think that over again. That's huge. So many people think that going independent will magically solve all their problems. But it's not always sunshine and rainbows, is it? Nope, not at all. Wallace is basically saying, don't expect to become a completely different person just because you ditch the nine to five. Mm -hmm. If you're avoiding responsibility now, you'll probably avoid it as your own boss too. It's all about self-awareness. And honestly, that's a message that we need now more than ever. So what's the takeaway for our listeners, especially those who might be toying with the idea of going independent? Wallace is driving home a huge E point, and it's about motivation. He's basically saying, look, the rewards of being your own boss they're typically not frequent, immediate, or large. So true. It's a long game, for sure. Yeah, you got to be driven by something deeper than just escaping the office or being able to work in your pajamas. It's about finding something you're truly passionate about and building something of lasting value. And that takes time. Okay, so let's say you've done some serious soul searching, you've answered all of Guy W. Wallace's tough questions, and you're feeling pretty good about this whole independent consulting thing. Yeah. What's next on the agenda? What's going to wow those 1985 clients? Mm -hmm. Well, Wallace gets into the nitty gritty of what clients were looking for back then, and it is a trip, let me tell you. We're talking a mix of timeless wisdom and some seriously, like, totally rad 80s vibes. Okay, I am so here for this. Lay it on me. What were the make or break qualities to impress clients back in the day, you know, when shoulder pads and power suits were all the rage? All right, so some of it is pretty universal, right? Like professionalism, that's huge. Yeah. Clients want to know you're reliable, trustworthy, that you're going to show up and deliver. And commitment, that's another big one. Makes sense. Yeah. Basically, you're running a business, even if your office is just your kitchen table. Precisely. Wallace also really emphasizes communication skills. Like, can you break down complex ideas so the clients actually understand what's going on? Can you explain your value proposition clearly and effectively? That's key. Definitely. And you can't forget good old fashioned business sense, right? Like understanding how to manage your time, how to negotiate contracts. Those are timeless skills. Absolutely. Those are the foundations. But then there's the advice that's very anti-dill of its time. Picture this. Wallace is adamant that consultants should always, and I mean always, wear formal attire. Wait, seriously? Formal attire, even if you're working from home? No casual Fridays? Nope. Apparently not in 1985. Times have definitely changed, right? Can you imagine rocking a power suit to work on a spreadsheet in your living room? I mean, I guess it speaks to a different era of what professionalism meant. But yeah, I think I'll stick to my jeans and t-shirt for now. 
Although, you know, I'm starting to think Wallace was on to something with the whole face-to-face -face communication thing. He really believed in the power of personal connection, even over the phone. It's like he could see the future of Zoom calls or something. It's true. He might have been all about that formal wear, but his core message that genuine human connection is essential to building strong relationships, it totally resonates. The tools might change, but the underlying principle remains the same. Okay, so we've talked about self-awareness, we've talked about professionalism, but this issue of Chicago performance instruction has got one more gem for us to uncover. And this one, it's a bit of a curve gall. Oh, do tell. I always love a good plot twist. Well, there's this column by V.S. Lout called Excellence, and let me tell you, it's not your typical business advice. Okay, you've got my attention. <laughs> What's so unconventional about this Excellence column? So, Lout, he's on this kind of tongue-in-cheek search for excellence, right? Yeah. And where does he end up? Not in a boardroom, not in a fancy office, but at a junior high school parent-teacher night, to be exact. Interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Hmm. What happens next? Did he stumble upon some brilliant 13-year-old entrepreneur? Not quite. So he's walking the halls, observing the classrooms, and he comes across this advanced literature class. And this is where it gets really interesting. Lout discovers that the teacher has this ironclad rule no novels that have been adapted into movies. Wow, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Mm. I can imagine a lot of teenagers would be up in arms about that. Right. But of course, there's a method to this teacher's madness. Mm -hmm. Lout realizes that by forcing students to engage with the original text with all its nuances and complexities, they're experiencing something far richer, far more challenging than any movie adaptation could ever offer. I'm starting to see where this is going. It's about confronting the real thing, not the simplified pre digest version. Exactly. And, you know, it's kind of like what we were talking about with Guy W. Wallace earlier. It's about pushing beyond the easy path, embracing those tough questions, those uncomfortable truths about ourselves and our work. It's about choosing the real book, even when it's harder, even when it's more demanding, because that's where true excellence lies. And you know what? I think that's a message that resonates whether you're a hotshot consultant in 1985 a freelancer navigating the gig economy in 2024, or just someone who wants to do their best work, whatever that may be. Embrace the challenge. Choose the real book. Well said. And on that note, I think we've officially mined all the wisdom that Chicago Performance and Instruction, December 1985 edition, has to offer. This has been a trip, I gotta say. Uh -huh. Who knew a blast from the past could be so relevant? Right. It just goes to show some things never go out of style. Until next time. Keep seeking out those real books, my friends, and keep striving for that true excellence.